Hello, my name is Dr. Puzzler, and today we're going to be talking about how to use vector graphics in Unity. Before we dive right on in, though, let us just talk a little bit about the game I'm currently working on, The Great Deer, which you can currently wishlist now on Steam. Um, the Great Deer is a modern point-and-click adventure game where you play as an intrepid explorer searching for an artifact of great value, um, journey to the temple, and discover the secrets within. It's uh, going to be coming out within a couple of months, so it'd be great if you could just smash that wishlist button right here so you're notified when the game comes out, and I'll also get a bit of an algorithm boost. Now that we got that out of the way, let's just jump right on into the video. Okay, so I've got a new Unity new uni project here, and so let's just talk a little bit about, before we start like worrying about how to install this and how to use vector graphics in Unity, Let's just talk a little bit about why you would even want to use vector graphics or what even a vector graphic is, right? So, first question, what is vector graphics? So, with images, you kind of have two sort of categories. You have raster and you have vector. Raster is going to be like your JPEGs, PNGs, GIF, stuff like that. Whereas vector is going to be stuff like um, .svg or uh, SWS, like a flash file. Um, so a raster graphic, basically how the image is, how the data is stored in the image is through pixels. Has a set of pixels and the colors for each of these pixels, right? Whereas a vector graphic is using math to define the different like curves and lines and colors in the image. And both of these formats have some pros and cons. Um, raster graphics are going to be a lot better for certain things such as like a photo or for uh, lots of different kinds of graphics or like pixel art um, or stuff that's a bit more uh, detailed or uh, more physical. Um, not sure exactly how to, how to describe that. But anyways, the downsides to raster graphics though is that um, it gets blurry when you zoom in. It gets all pixelated and um, they will... If you have higher resolution images, it'll be a large file size. With the uh, vector graphics, though, um, vector graphics can zoom in infinitely. And because it's basically just a bunch of math, it's just basically like a text file with just a bunch of math, it's a, very, um, it's a very small file size, comparatively speaking, just uh, where, where uh, raster graphics can get like 50 or so megabytes for a high quality image. A vector graphic is going to be like a megabyte, probably less. Um, so definitely a huge difference in uh, file sizes. Um, the problem with vector graphics, though, is um, it is uh, because it is difficult to have like a bit more detail almost with those. Um, once again, it's a little bit difficult to explain, and it's best just to kind of look at comparisons yourself. Like if you just Google up like raster versus vector, you'll find stuff. Um, kind of about just like what the difference between differences between the two files, uh, two image types are. Um, but now that we got that out of the way, um, why would you want to use vector graphics in your game? Um, I may named one of the big reasons, which is uh, infinite scaling, infinite resolution with a low file size. Um, but another reason is if you are making your game's uh, art in a vector program like Adobe Illustrator, um, using vector graphics as the images in your game can be very helpful um, just in being able to edit those images um, rather than having to re-import. I am a firm believer in making your game's art as closely compatible with the program that you're making it in as possible. So that way, you can simply just double-click on the program, on, on the uh, image file in Unity, and it'll open up in your program. You can edit it, and then the changes will just be done automatically, rather than having to re-import, which can be a bit of a pain. So, how do we do this? Well, first off, and actually, let me just hurry and switch to a bit of a more comfortable layout. So we're going to want to go to our package manager, and if you don't already have it pulled up, it's just going to be window and then package manager, just right there. And what we're gonna wanna do, if we go to Unity Registry, 
let's just click on this cog icon, advanced project settings, and we're going to enable preview packages. Just click I understand. Preview packages are sort of like experimental um, packages that may not be quite ready for production. Um, which, disclaimer, this could potentially, because it is a preview package, it could be, um, it could make, there could be changes made to it that, uh, could break things. I haven't had that happen to me, and I've used, been, I've used this for, uh, probably around six months or so, um, and it's been very stable for me. It's worked well, but just a bit of a warning, um, in advance, um, so anyways, once we enable preview packages, you can see that there's a bunch of these showing up here. However, the SVG importer, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and that's the kind of file size that Unity will support, the kind of file that Unity will support. Um, but it's not going to show up here because it's not in the default list. So we're going to need to add it from a get URL. And that get URL should be just showing up right here. It's com.unity.vectorgraphics, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to push that this plus icon and add package from get URL. This little text box will pop up. Just copy or paste that into there. So it's com.unity.vectorgraphics. Very simple. Then just click add. Take a little bit of time to import those scripts. Okay. And we're done. That is all the setup that you need. To make it so now we can import vector graphics into our Unity project. So how do we do this? Um, so I'm just going to show you based off an example I have from my game. This is just a character or a thing in my game. So what we're going to do here, sorry, I kind of got ahead of myself. I'm using Adobe Illustrator. Um, there's other vector programs. I think GIMP is one of them. I haven't used any other programs though. Um, export process will vary depending on your program. Uh, but I am using uh, Illustrator, which works well for me. For Illustrator, it's just Control Command Shift S or Control Shift S. Um, that just save as, and then we're gonna change the format to SVG. We're gonna use Artboards, and then this is Artboard three. You can also do like a range, like we could do like three to 10, thirteen or whatever, right? We could just um, have that be what um, batch export stuff. And then let's just um, rename that to Tutorial Vector. Perfect. One thing I should mention is that this uh, vector importer does not support um, text from SVGs. That that, that will just uh, get, it just won't show up. So that is just something to keep in mind with this. So as you can see, we can just drag this into our assets and boom we now have a vector graphic in here and you can see there's some settings here we'll get into what those all do in just a moment and then if we just drag this into here boom we've got a vector graphic in our unity scene and as you can see it's just using an unlit vector material you can change that out if you want um that's just the one that i typically use just because it's default no real reason to change it um, typical sprite um, features are supported with this. You can change the color. Um, you can flip it however you want. You can interact with masks, sorting layers, all that stuff is works perfectly fine with these. And if we zoom in, we can see that we don't lose any quality, sort of. You can see you kind of have like these holes appearing and it's kind of like, uh, you got kind of, um, it's not smooth. So why is this? Um, because it's basically just rendering like a mesh of sorts. Um, it in order to save on CPU usage, it kind of uh, it kind of uh, what's the word? It kind of it sort of like simplifies what it's rendering, so it doesn't take up much power, and that's normally fine. Like if we were zoomed out here, you can't notice any of that stuff. It looks just fine. But if you're gonna zoom in further, um, there is ways to uh, work with that, right? And you have some stuff here. These all will do different things. You can change the kind of sprite it is. Um, you can change the target resolution. But there's also this great thing here called zoom factor. And if we just increase that, even just to 2, and you can see it already got some improvement. And if we even change that to like 10, 
that you can see like there's a vast improvement um i typically just keep it at one unless i need to move it higher just to save on cpu resources of course um but that is just a really nice thing there so you can change um the zoom the uh, render resolution of this image right <laughs> Um, but what about animations? Animations are a big part of making games, obviously. I'm actually just going to delete that since you don't need it anymore. So, if we're making an animation, um, how do we import that? Will it work the same? So, first off, let's just import an animation. As you can see, I'm using Adobe Animate. And we have just an animation here with the same character. And Adobe Animate, how you export animations as an SVG, is going to be export, export movie. And then SVG sequence. And I'm actually just going to create a new folder to hide that in. And we'll just call that a tutorial vector animation. Save. It's going to give me this thing. Um, obviously, this will depend based on the program you're using. I'm using Animate, which uh, is a... Or this was previously Adobe Flash. Um, obviously, it'll depend based on this, the program you're using, right? So now that we have this here, and as you can see in our folder, it's just a bunch of SVGs, just like a PNG sequence, but with SVGs, obviously. Bring that into Unity. And it's going to take a little bit to import those. So you can see we've got our folder here. If I open this up, and typically when you create an animation, you just drag these into the scene and create one for you. As you can see, it's not doing that for us. And this is just because these are all packages. However, underneath them, we have these uh, sprite assets, which are just the same thing, pretty much, just not a package. And so what we're going to do, really, or a, not a package, but a prefab. What we can do, though, to kind of just simplify this process, rather than having to open up each of these and then individually select them, we can just go into this filter and filter as sprite. And as you can see, it's actually going to have a, it's going to search in assets, but if you have a lot of assets, that's not going to help you. So you can just, uh, uh, dumb that, or you can, uh, you can, uh, whatever, you can select a lower folder, whatever folder you're in, just by using this here. I cannot think of the right words today. And then you just select all of these, and you can import them and create a new animation as you normally would. I'm not going to rename that because I don't care. And as you can see, now if we open up animation, boom, we have our animation. And it'll work just like any other animation. Um, now, as you can see, though, we have a little bit of a problem here, which is that it's emanating from the center where we would want it to emanate from the bottom. As it is doing here, we want that origin to be down here. Um, so what we can do here, there's a few ways to do this. You could, of course, just go into the sprite editor. I don't have the sprite selected right now. You could go into the sprite editor and change the origin point here. I'm just going to revert that. The There's a few ways to do that. You could do that. Revert. Um, another way you could do is just change the pivot within the SVG settings. Um, basically, a similar thing here. But one nice thing about this, though, from doing it here rather than over there, is you can change the pivot point to SVG origin and you apply and that'll just change it to the origin point of the SVG itself. Um, SVGs do have a bit of data that will allow it to change the, um, that will have like an origin point and what like the XY positions of all that stuff is right. Um, so if we just change it to that, it'll do that pretty much automatically for us. And so now we can see, Oh, let's move down here. As you can see, now it's emanating from here. And actually, if you look here, you can see the origin point is here. Um, and that's just based on how Animate uh, sets its origin points. The origin point for an Animate file is like right up here at this top left corner. Um, that may be different from for different files, or if you change that yourself. Anyways, you could also manually put the origin point, like say, down here. That's fine too. It just depends on what you're comfortable doing, what you're used to doing. This is an easy way I found to do it. And one of the nicest things, though, about using vector graphics is now, say, if we want to ha open up one of these in our vector program, and I swear, this is... Unity's been struggling with me today with opening stuff up in Illustrator. 
Um, typically, you could just double click on that and open it up, but for some reason, Unity doesn't want to work for me right now. So you can just double click on stuff here. Um, and boom, we have our folder, our file opened up in Illustrator. We can change that however we want. If I want to make a giant circle in here, I can do that. And then boom, there's a giant circle there. I can undo that, boom. And voila, it's gone. That's really just like, that's something that would come with using whatever file type you're using to make the graphics, whether if like if you're using Photoshop, use a PSB, and then you can do similar things. Um, you don't have to use vector graphics, of course. That's just something that I found easy and nice to use for me who is making my graphics with vector. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you today. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you have any questions comment i can try and help you or join the point and click discord um i'm advertising the discord of a completely other youtube channel but it's great there there's a lot of people there to help you in your uh, development journey um whether you're making a point and click game or not so i definitely recommend joining that links of course are all down in the description and i'll see you next time